As part of my 12 Days of Hey J, I was asked to play Monster Hunter on the PlayStation 2, the original, and it took me five hours to slay my first monster, but I kind of liked it. Hey J Review! Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another review of another Monster Hunter game. This the first one of 2022, and I am recording this fresh off of my stream. I literally streamed Monster Hunter, went to bed, and now I'm recording this because it was such a much better experience than I was expecting. So this was the game that capped off the 12 days of Hey J, wrapped it all up, and I was really expecting to struggle. And I did struggle, but I was expecting it to be uncomfortable, unpleasant, and disgusting. I've been warned by the Monster Hunter community for the past year that the original Monster Hunter did not age well, that it was terrible, and all of these bad things. And I was pleasantly surprised to find so much of the core concept of Monster Hunter in its first iteration. And yes, I've only made it to the first monster, so my views of the game are probably skewed to the tutorial area, but I struggled so hard and overcoming the first monster, a stupid Velocidrome, Damn made me That's feel just as accomplished as slaying a black All dragon in world. Okay, maybe not quite that level, but it made me feel quite accomplished. And I want to share with that with you because I was so surprised. I thought I would play this, it would be like complete jank and we would never touch it again. But now I'm like, what's what's more in Monster? <laughs> like I want to see more of this game. Does it continue? So let's just like break it down from the beginning. So when you first load up the game, uh, you're, you're introduced to the iconic Monster Hunter soundtracks and the music in this game and in this franchise have been like on point since the beginning. The first, uh, actually proof of a hero plays as soon as you get to the character selection screen. I'm like, do we need to be that, um, uh, that pumped to make a character? But honestly, if you go back to the game after having played other entries, having proof of the hero play when you are creating the very first hunter in the very first game, it kind of makes sense. Then speaking of the character creation, honestly, not that bad. And this was kind of my first glimpse of the graphics. And when I went back and played Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, I was like, oh my God, this is so ugly. And my choices are so limited. This was going from World and Rise back. But going from 3U back to OG, it's not, honestly, there was, it didn't feel that different. The graphics did not feel that bad. And the, okay, keep in mind, I was playing this on an emulator, so I don't know if it like ups the, the quality of the graphics. I think it does to a certain degree. Um, but barring that, uh, it looked pretty good. And my choices, I was actually quite happy with the default skin of the Hunter. Whereas in 3U, I felt all the Hunter models were all very aggressive chads. And I was like, I, I kind of want just the happy-go-lucky Hunter. And there are more of those options in the original one. So, um, Character creation is kind of better in the original Monster Hunter than the other one. So after that, we get into the village and the game doesn't really do much in terms of story. It's just drops you in a village, you're naked, you wake up and it's like, today I'm going to be a hunter. And that, that's all you need. And you walk outside and there's not like an immense amount of people to talk to. I think there's like six. There's only so many places you can go. There's only the hub. And you're very limited to what you can do, and the menus are very small, so it keeps everything very focused. And basically, you talk to people, and they're like, go talk to the elder. Well, there's only one old person in town, so you talk to him. And he's like, here's the money, go grab some stuff. Richer. And with the money, you can only afford a few pieces of armor, uh, and that's it. You can't afford, actually, any of the weapons, so you're stuck with sword and shield. The game pretty much handholds you indirectly by saying... There are other weapons, you can see them, but you're gonna learn how to play this game with Sword and Shield, which is fantastic. Like, as someone, if this, I mean, this is the introductory Monster Hunter game for most people at the time, for anyone at the time playing it, uh, this is a great way to bring you into the franchise, what, well, into the game that would eventually be a franchise. So then, I spent all my money on a shirt. I got a nice shirt, I got like four defense out of it, and that's it. I didn't have enough money for pants, but I'm like, who needs pants when you got a shirt like this? So we go to the elder and he starts me off on some quests. He's like, all right, now go go grab some, uh, I think it was go grab some meat. So the first thing you do is you get launched into the first world. There's only three areas to look at. It's very kind of like, you know, gating you so that you're not getting overwhelmed. And you go and you kill some Aptonoth and you get some meat out of that. 
And then the next quest is like, all right, now we're gonna get you get, uh, we're gonna have you go get some herbs. All right, now you're gonna get some some blue mushrooms. And the whole time, there's nothing really threatening to you. The game guides you naturally, and there's no way that you can get around this. And it's like this is how you gather. And by the way, gathering, there's no prompts. You have to visually notice what it is you want to gather. You want some mushrooms, you go and and the mushroom... It's not like these things stand out and sparkle and shine. They're part of the environment, like a herb. Try to differentiate a herb from grass. It's just, this one's a little greener. It creates way more immersion in terms of playing a game as a hunter. So you're, 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 the first star quests are all about that. It's learning how to gather, you learn how to combine your first potion, you, and then the map slowly opens up and they're like, okay, now we're going to teach you how to fish. And now we're going to teach you how to do this. And by the time you're done the one star quest, you have learned all the mechanics. You know how to swing your sword. You know how to, how to gather, how to create potions, and how to do all the basic things that when you enter a game like Monster Hunter World, they assume a lot of that stuff you either already know or someone's going to teach you on YouTube or something like that. Um, so really appreciated how the game eases you into the game. And now let's talk about the controls, because that's another thing people are like, you're going to have to learn to use the claw. The biggest complaint with the controls is the fact that to swing your sword, you have to use the right analog stick. And there are three attacks. So with the sword and shield, that's the only thing I was able to play. If you tilt forward, you get uh, an overswing. If you tilt sideways, either direction, you get like a horizontal swing. And if you tilt back, you jump forward and jump slash. And then if you hold R1, you pull out your shield and then you can waggle your, your right analog stick to, to hit with your sword. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. And then to sheathe, it's you just hit square. And to use your items, you hit square. To run, you hit circle. All the face buttons make sense. The one that makes that's not so comfortable is the camera because the camera is the D-pad. If you want to turn your camera around, you have to use the D-pad. You can use L1 to like center the camera right behind you, which is what I was using at mo um, uh, for the mo most part when I'm kind of running around exploring. But when it came to hunting, I actually had to use the D-pad. And because you, can't, you want to run using the left analog stick, my thumb, my right thumb had to go across the controller to move the D-pad, which was really weird. And so I wasn't able to attack what because my right thumb is what I use to attack. I couldn't attack and set my camera. So what happens is you have to get very quick at moving, adjusting your camera, um, dodge, and then once your camera's set, that's when you attack. And that sounds bad, and I mean, it is bad because they changed it, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. At least not for the, for the low tier fights I had. I don't know, maybe when you get into the harder stuff, it becomes ridiculously stupid hard, but um, not that bad. Uh, th then you actually get uh, introduced to the most hostile creature so far, which is the Velosa Prey. And they hunt in packs, so you have to hit, fight three of them. So now you're dealing with three hostiles trying to attack you while you're trying to attack them. And that's a big step up from gathering mushrooms and, and, and slaying some um, Aptonoth. But it's, it's a natural progression, and that one teaches you more that you have to be more wary of your positioning and your camera. And it taught me so much. Like, I was so bad at the beginning, but after, like, I understood what I had to do, it just felt so good. Also in this two-star quest is your first egg quest. And when I had my first egg quest, Monster Hunter World, everybody was freaking out. I was like, oh, he's doing an egg quest. I was like, what's, a, what's the big deal about an egg quest? I'm, and I ended up having to run from a horde of Aptonoth, which was terrifying at the time. But that is nothing compared to the egg quest of OG Monster Hunter, which has you going up and stealing friggin' Rathalos's eggs. And Rathalos is the first monster they introduce you to, so you, at no point in this uh, game at this time have you met any other monster. You just, you've seen Rathalos in the cutscene. I actually don't remember if you see any other major monster in the cutscene. Um, but in the game, you have not been introduced to any monster outside of Aptonoths, Velocipres, Balfango, like really low level stuff. And now they're like, go get an egg. And just before you get into the cave, there's a Rathalos that flies over so you see it, it's in the field, and it warns you that when you get spotted, uh, you get the little icon that shows up. And so that is terrifying because I'm still missing my pants. Once you get that egg, it becomes so much more difficult because as soon as you step out of the, the, the cave with the egg, 
and the developers knew exactly what they were doing. They put a wasp or a mosquito, I forgot what those things are called, that attacks you right away. So if you are um, caught off guard, you will either get smacked by the mosquito dropping the egg, which is frustrating, or if you see it like me, you will panic and try to dodge, which will shoot you off the cliff and then you drop your egg. It's trolling to, oh man, the trolling was there at the very beginning. So you have to like take a left right away to go down some steps and not drop your egg. And then you gotta hustle that thing, hoping the Rathalos doesn't show up. Uh, regardless, he will show up in one screen or another. And then you have to go through two screens where there's a bunch of Velociprey, which are jumping at you. There's a Rathalos coming down and you're just hauling your, your, your egg with no pants trying to get this thing. That was one of the hardest quests I had to do at that point. And it made, it gave me an adrenaline rush. I got an adrenaline rush from hauling an egg. This game does not mess around. So after that, the emergency quest to unlock the third star uh, quest is hunt your first hunt, which is a Velocidrome. One step up from Velocipray. And I was like, all right, here we go. I got my sword and I'm like, just to be safe, let's upgrade it. So I bought the next level. So you start off with an iron sword, I think. And I was able to afford a bone sword, which gave me like 12 more to my attack thing. Uh, or maybe it was 14. It was a significant bump, I felt. Um, I got some pants which had one defense, I had my shirt, and I had a helmet I think with one defense. So in total I think I had eight defense. I know, it feels really low. And I go out into it with all of the stuff that I've gathered from my quest and I was like, how hard can it be? Why well, I gotta stop saying that. Uh, it was, okay, so j just to like c contextualize this experience, I timed out on a Velocidrome. So the good news is it didn't kill me, it almost killed me, I carded twice. Um, the bad news is I wasn't able to deal enough damage to kill it. And this thing was an experience and a half. At no point can you just, this is the first monster they throw at you. At no point do you get some one-on-one -on -one time with the Velocidrome. He's always surrounding himself with a pack of at least two to five Velociprey. And these things are like wah, 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 and then they jump on you and you're trying to manage the camera. You're trying to hit this thing. You're trying to like fight this guy and you got his mob that's just jumping on you. It is such a difficult experience as a new hunter trying to like figure out what you're doing in this game. I'm always trying to like, I, I'm not perceiving, I always try to experience this game as a new player coming into a game. And I let the game teach me what to do. I don't necessarily expect the game to uh, consider that I am a player who played Monster Hunter World and Rise, which would be impossible at the time. So that's why I always give the game like, um, I don't always over plan because I'm like, well, the game expects me to have done all this at this point. So let's see what the Velocidrome is, um, which is why I didn't like grind out armor. I didn't grind out um, my all my items in that because I'm like, not in my organic progression, this is everything I've accumulated. Is this enough to take on the Velocidrome? And the answer was simply no because I wailed on this thing constantly. I learned, I eventually learned how to like move my camera and dodge, which was, that was like a moment of click when I finally learned how to attack the Velocidrome while dodging the Velocipre. Cause there's no point in killing them because first of all, they take many hits, five to six hits. I think it was, maybe it was more with that weapon to kill them. And then they just respawn and this thing is constantly running. So you're just gonna use up your sharpness, which I did. I used up all my items. I had, my sharpness was in the red. My stamina was in the red. I had no healing items and I was bashing on this thing for a good like 20 minutes with everything in the red and finally I timed out. It was it was the most disgusting, embarrassing fight I've ever done. And I was like, oh, we got to prepare for this thing. So I spent the next hour going through the quest, re getting a ton of herbs, ton of blue mushrooms. I got my potions to 10. Uh, what else did I do? Oh, I had no whetstones. So I grinded out money to get at least 10 whetstones. And money is the hardest thing to get in this game, especially in the beginning. You have no, you have no money. <laughs> Every quest gives you 100 to 200 zennies. Anything worthwhile costs 1,000 zennies. So do the math. And if you want a new weapon, those are like five to six, like if you want to have a great sword, those are five to 6,000 zennies. You're not going to be getting another weapon unless you really focus hard on grinding it out. So I got my whetstones. Uh, what else did I get? There was a third item. Oh, I had to go out, get some meat, cook that meat so that I had all of my stamina stuff. So I had like 10 well done steaks. And then I was looking at my swords to upgrade them. And this is the wildest thing. So in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, I'm always missing parts, but I've got money. In Monster Hunter placed it for OG Monster Hunter, I have parts on days. Like I had up to, I think 40 of those Velocipre claws, but I have no money to upgrade. So 
It's, it's reversed. I have all these parts, but no money to like pay the smithy. So I grinded out um, money so that I could upgrade my sword and I ended up getting like two, three level upgrade on my sword, which brought me, I, it gave me the blue Velocipray sword, which looked really awesome. And then I got the, that gave me 140 damage. So I almost doubled the strength of my sword almost. And then in my lower quest against the Velocipray, I was testing out the three different attacks to understand how many attacks does it take to kill one of these. And I learned the overhead slash and the jump slash takes about three. And no, took six, whereas the side slash took three. So I'm like, okay, my biggest dealing damage is my side slash. And so now I went into the Velocidrome prepared with some better armor. I actually didn't upgrade my armor because I, since I survived, I'm like, armor is not the problem. Weapon's the problem. So I went in with a stronger sword, all my items, and I was just side slashing this thing, side slashing. I'm just going crazy. And finally he died. And so like that, that like amount of focus and attention of, here is a Velocidrome, use everything you've learned to take down the Velocidrome and overcoming it. it, it just put me over the moon. It made me feel so awesome. And now I unlocked the three star quest and I looked at what it is and a lot of it is, uh, now they're giving me a little bit more money. They're giving me like packs of Balfango to do. They're, they only introduced me to one new monster, which is a, uh, I think it's Yan Kutku, which I did not fight because I didn't, I, well one, I know I'm not ready for it and I ran out of time. But I'm like, oh, in all of this, they only give you the next fight, the Yan Kutku. So that is like the next target. And now you have to basically, as a hunter, I looked at, okay, I can upgrade my armor and all that, but I need to grind money. So if I was playing this game again, which I actually want to, I would just focus on grinding up my armor, grinding up my weapons, because I have all the parts, just get the money, and then let's go for the Yan Kutku and learn how to fight it. It's so focused, and it's such like a, a ladder approach of, Okay, now learn this new piece of knowledge. Learn this new piece of knowledge. And once you learn it, okay, master it, apply it. The formula is so, it's it's there. The the core monster hunter formula is, is there and it's so good. It's just not polished. It's like 80% of the way there, but it's still so good. And I think most of you can appreciate it as long as you can get over the, the comforts of the new world, the comforts of having everything you need at your disposal. Like you are just, uh, it, this, there's more of a struggle, but it's it's a good struggle. The game never lies to you and expects you to, you know, there's no like, oh, that's bullshit. The game literally starts you from nothing. And it's all about like, you're just grabbing things and you're trying to build yourself up from nothing. And that struggle just feels so good. And the game is not overly punishing to the point of, oh, this is just really hard. It's just, oh, I was very underprepared. Or, oh, I didn't have the knowledge I needed, but mostly I was not I was not prepared properly. So, yeah, this was actually a wild ride that I was surprised I enjoyed it as much as I did because I want to keep playing OG Monster Hunter, but I'm already playing uh, Monster Hunter 3U. I've got Monster Hunter Rise PC coming out and I've got way too many other games to play. So this is going to be a game I think we pull off the shelf maybe every couple months and we just try to progress to the next one. I think there's like 19 monsters in it, um, so it's not... It's a pretty meaty game. I think it takes 50 to 60 hours and there's a lot of grinding, but um, I think this will be just the game I slowly make my way through because so far I want to see what else it has to offer. So if you have the chance, get a copy on PS2. Um, otherwise, I know it's a really hard game to get uh, and fine. I would say pick, up, pick it up on an emulator just to give it a try if you can. Um, well, I know that's controversial to a lot of people. Some people don't want that. Uh, but it is a game that you cannot play or find in any other capacity unless you have an original PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 2 game. So if you can find it, I recommend trying it out because I had a good time with it and I'm sure you might as well. So I'll see you on the next video or stream. And until next time, everyone, keep it classy. Subscribe.